Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you're welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Move by your spirit in this place. Move by your spirit in this place. Move by your spirit in this place. Have your way. Oh, Lord, you are welcome in this place. Oh, Lord, you're welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Oh, 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 move by your spirit in this place. Move by your spirit in this place. Move by your spirit in this place. Have your way. One more time. Oh, 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 Lord, you are welcome. Let's welcome him in here. Hallelujah. In this place, Lord, you are welcome. In this place, Lord, you are welcome. In this place, have your way. Oh, have your way. Healing is in the building. Have your way. Deliverance is in the building. Have your way. Lord, we need, we need, we need you. Have your way. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Have your way. Come on, put them hands together. Come on, put them hands together and give our God. Give our God. Come on, put them hands together. Give our God. Give our God some praise in here. The Bible says, clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Come on, put them hands together and give our God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our great deliverer, our way maker, our peace, our healer. Come on and give our God some praise in here. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's not through with you yet. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. Hey, glory, hallelujah. Oh, bless his name right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Somebody said, what you praising him for? I'm praising him because he has restored my soul. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. Hallelujah. He has restored my soul. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. He has restored my mind. Hallelujah. He has restored my heart. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Woo. I understand what it means when the writer said I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord hallelujah there's some people that desire to be in the house of God and they can't be here today but God has allowed you and you and you and you and you and you an opportunity to be in this place and for this cause we give him glory we give him glory can we say hallelujah Oh, bless his name. 
Truly, we count it a privilege today. You can take your seats. Oh, bless his name. We count it a privilege to stand here behind the sacred desk today, speaking unto God's people. I want y'all to know that this is prophecy being fulfilled. Oh, bless his name. This is prophecy being fulfilled. And we thank God. We want to give honor today to the pastor, the great shepherd of this house. Our bishop. Our bishop, Michael Terrence Smith Sr. We want to give God honor for this man. Come on, y'all put your hands together for this man. One thing I like about it, he's doing a great work like Nehemiah, and he can't come down. We give honor to his wife, the Honorable Toya Daly Smith. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing, and he obtains favor with the Lord. Hallelujah. We give honor to all of the ministry, the assistant pastor, our evangelist Veronica Emery, to all of the elders, the ministers, the deacons. We give honor to you. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that you are important today? Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for yourselves. You are important today. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you would, give me about 25, 30 minutes, and we're going to give you thus saith the Lord and get out of your way. Praise the Lord. If you would, open up your Bibles with me to the book of Jonah, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Jonah, the second chapter. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 8. Actually, 1 through 9. And then we're going to look at Luke, the 22nd chapter, the 31st verse through the 32nd verse. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your people. We decrease that you may increase. Have your way today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish belly and said, I cried by reason of my inflection unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. Thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All the billows and the waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. O oh Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I vow. Salvation is of the Lord. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Luke the 22nd chapter real quick and verse number 31 says and the Lord said Simon Simon behold Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen Thy brethren. I want to leave a topic with you today. When, W H E N, your when, W H E N, becomes when, W H E N, your faith will make you whole. When your when becomes when, your faith will make you you whole. There are five important principles that we must understand when when begins to take place in our lives. And if you haven't had when in your life, I will tell you, keep on living because when will knock on your door. Can we say amen, somebody? The first principle is when is at the point of action.
tension, at the point of attack, at the point where certain situations and circumstances arrives upon you unexpectedly. And sometimes they are unfavorable. Hallelujah. The second point or principle is when is at the point where either you survive or you make up in your mind, I, I will give up. Praise his name. The third principle of when is at that point of chosen opposition, you will come to your senses. Praise his name. Whether it be in the midst of sickness, whether it be in the midst of financial drought, whether it be in the midst of a bad relationship or a good relationship that have gone bad. You will begin to make proper adjustments in the midst of when and look for the great deliverer. Can we say amen? Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble yourselves and pray and turn from your wicked ways and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal your land. Wind will cause God to show up and show out even when you don't have the strength to make it. Can we say amen, somebody? The fourth principle in wind is when is at the point when you come to the realization that I cannot do this on my own. I cannot make it on my own. But in times like this, I need a savior. I need Jesus. I need wonderful. I need counselor. I need mighty God to be on my side. Can we say amen, somebody? In fact, in the midst of that, when you begin to make a divine declaration and you begin to say, he is my present help in the time of trouble. He is my present help in the time of trouble. When mother and father and sister and brother could not help me, he is. My present help in the time of trouble. The fifth declaration point is when, when when is available at this point, you begin to understand that God, I believe you. God, I believe you. Many times the adversary come upon us and he wants to take away our belief. But when when comes when you begin to get into the position of saying I believe God has anybody ever lost their job Amen. has anybody ever been sick in their bodies Amen. has anybody ever had family or problems on your job uh, have you ever turned to the to the hills from whence come your help and say God I can't do this but I believe you Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the time when I lost everything that I had. I had car lot, big church down in North Carolina, had it all. Had monies coming on top of money, on top of money, and I lost everything I had. Hallelujah. But how many of y'all know that I believe God because the Bible says I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. How many of y'all know that God stands true to his word? There's two things that God does and he cannot do in the midst of wind. He cannot lie and he cannot fail. Y'all might as well say amen somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all might as well say amen somebody. Hallelujah. It is at this point your belief system begins to develop what is called faith. And that faith, when it comes by hearing and it gets strengthened by word. And let me tell y'all this. I thank God for New Bethel. I thank God for New Bethel because it was in this place that God said, go back home. Humble yourself. Hallelujah. Turn from your ways and do it my way and come back home. And it was at that time God allowed me to come and across this pulpit, this man of God began to minister to my soul and talk about faith. We talk about faith. God can. God will. God shall. He God can. God will. God shall. God will do it. He can do it. He will never let you down. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that faith comes by and hearing by? How can you hear without a, and how can he preach except, hallelujah, how many of y'all know that God has given us, hallelujah, what we need to make it in this last and evil days? Y'all might as well say amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that in the midst of when your faith becomes strong, all of a sudden victory follows your strong faith. All of a sudden deliverance follows your strong faith. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 When your win becomes win, when arises 
And when winter rises, it brings forth crossroads. And sometimes these crossroads brings forth situations and circumstances. And these situations and circumstances come upon you and sometimes catch you off guard. Have you ever had something happen in your life to catch you totally off guard? Have you ever had something happen, a sickness hit your body and you never saw it coming? Hallelujah. I'm out of the time I was here about four years ago and I was sitting about right there and I felt funny in my arm and Elder Emery said, Bishop, are you all right? And I said, I don't know, but I'm feeling a little funny. Bless his holy name. My blood pressure is shot up to 224 over 94. Oh, bless his holy name. And I remember, hallelujah, sitting in the hospital room, laying on the bed. And I wanted them to discharge me because I had my son with me at the time. And Deacon Carr came to me and said, Bishop, you need to let him keep you. Because this is what happened to my father. He died in his sleep. And I said, God, and I, as I laid there in that hospital bed, in the midst of my win, in the midst of somebody who's always been in good health and in good shape, I found myself looking up to God and said, God, by your stripes, I am healed. God, by your stripes, I were healed. God, you promised that you would never let me down. Hallelujah. 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 That next day I got up and they gave me a stress test. They made me run on a treadmill for nine minutes. And I was just running. I was just running. And I began to sing songs unto God. I began to say, God, I thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for all you've done for me. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. In other words, what happened was my win caused me to make up in my mind, I will live and I will not die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When will cause you to connect with faith? Oh, bless his holy name. We got to understand that many of you are going through things, and I'm speaking in the prophetic right now. Some of y'all are smiling. Hallelujah. But in the inside, you're hurting so bad. But I'm here to send a word from the Lord today and tell you that God hears your cry. The Bible said this poor man cried and God heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. God said, I stand true to my word. I will not let you down. I will not fail you. Hallelujah. When your wind becomes wet, the only thing that will see you through is your ability to have faith. It is this faith that exalts God. It is this faith. Hallelujah. We're not coming to church just to be spectated to. We're not coming to church just to be entertained. We're not coming to church just to see what he or she has on but God has commanded us to come and assemble ourselves. First of all, to provoke one another to love. And next of all, to help each other, to strengthen each other, to curve, help each other grow through this thing. Can we say amen, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. When you begin to magnify God, God will take over the situation in your life. This is why I make the divine declaration today. According to Ephesians 3 and 20, I say now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. I'm speaking over your finances today. I'm speaking over your homes today. Now over him. Now unto him that is able to do. I'm speaking over your health. I'm speaking to those that are battling afflictions in your body. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may ask. And that all that we may think according to the power. That works in us. I'm speaking over your life today that God is regulating. God is working. Let me, let me, let me, let me stop. God is not working on it, but by faith, God has already worked it out. Amen. Put them hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, oh, bless his name. We got to keep in mind that it's not if, but it's when.
It's not if. And see, y'all have to understand, this is not a bed of roses. Serving God is not going to be a bed of roses. The Bible said that I may know him through the fellowship of his sufferings, but through the power of his resurrection. Meaning that if I suffer with him, God said I'm going to reign with him. If I go through the storm, he's going to bring me back out on the other side. He's going to make a way out of nowhere. He's going to step in and be my God. And I will lift up my hands and say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not if, but it's when. And in the midst of that when, God said, listen, only thing I want out of this is glory. I want glory. I want glory. I'm going to let you suffer a little bit. But guess what? The suffering is not going to kill you. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. 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 When your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole. Please understand. Oh, bless his name. Please, please understand. We're supposed to be attacked because we are the enemy of the enemy. We're not children of darkness. We're not children of the devil. Oh, bless his name. That's the reason why sometimes wind does come upon us because we entertain and we step into the realm sometime or the playground of the adversary. Oh, bless his holy name. We step into the realm of disobedience and then all of a sudden wind comes up and God has to show forth another wind to bring you up on the out of that adversary playground. Can we say amen, somebody? Hallelujah. We have to understand that the adversary is sending forth his attacks. Oh, bless his name. And this is why we have to define and divine and divine declare that, listen, even though the attacks are coming, no weapon formed against us. Uh, no weapon formed against us. Uh, no weapon formed against us. Sometimes you got to speak that to him and think until it becomes reality. No weapon formed against us. So prosper. I've seen it in this church. I've seen it with Elder Harris. I've seen it with different ones that have been afflicted. The weapon may be formed, but guess what, baby? It's not going to prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I've seen some lose their jobs, but God is still putting food on the table. The weapon may be formed, but it will not prosper. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. These attacks. We have to understand the, the point or purpose of these attacks. These attacks are designed to take away your faith. I'm going to let that marinate for a second. These attacks. Hallelujah. And it wasn't until I came to the realization, Bishop, that me losing everything was only designed for me to stop believing God. And by us walking in a fleshly body, this is why it's important that you all who come to church when you want to come to church, you have yourself in church because this is where you get the ammunition to fight the devil. The Bible says, take unto you the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, God didn't make us defensive, but God made us offensive. Huh? He didn't make us chumps. He didn't make us the backup. But he said, listen, put them up. Let's go. On, hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Come on, say hallelujah in here. It's time that we put up our dukes and say, I want to fight with you, devil. You're a lying one. You are defeated foe. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, if God be for us, who could be against us? If God be for us, who could be against us? Nothing shall come against us. Can we say yes in here? Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. No weapon for him to prosper. No matter what. If we hold on to faith, that pleases God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, it says that when we come but without faith, it is impossible to please God. But when we come to God, we must know. Let me slow this slowly. We must know that he is. High five your neighbor and say he is. He is my healer. 
He is my deliverer. He's my way maker. He's my savior. He can take me from the, utter, the guttermost and put me to the uttermost. He is. Somebody say he is. He is a rewarder of them that diligently. Ah, God. We can't seek God in the midst of the television being on. Uh, we can't seek God in the midst of, of, of talking on the phone and talking crazy on the phone. But we got to turn out of turn those phones off, turn those TVs off and say, God, I want to come into my secret closet. Because when you step into your secret closet in the midst of your win, God will then begin to kick in and openly reward you. Amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. This might not be a shout message, but guess what? This is what God gave me to give to you. Can we say amen, somebody? Can we say amen, somebody? Hallelujah. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let us understand that faith is the bonding and pleasing element of God. It reveals God's love and loyalty and it causes him to stand up and rectify every adverse situation and every adverse circumstance. This is why I make a divine, another divine declaration that listen, my, my destination is far more greater than my situation because guess what? Even though I can't see my destiny, I know through faith that my destiny lies ahead and I will get there. Tomorrow, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm almost finished. Oh, bless his holy name. Oh, bless his holy name. God shows loyalty to those who have faith. Those who know how to say, listen, God, listen, God, I, I, I'm serving you. I'm doing the best that you taught me to do. God, I'm going to please you, God. I'm going to skim my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reason for service. And God, I expect you to do what you said you're going to do. Amen. Can we say Amen. Matter of the prophet Hezekiah in 2 Kings 20, the Bible says, and in those days, 2 Kings 20 and 1 says, and in those days was Hezekiah was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt surely die and not live. Oh, bless his holy name. Scripture says in verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall. He was at his wind and prayed unto Lord saying, I beseech thee. And let me tell y'all something. Sometimes the wind comes in your life not to destroy you, but it comes in your life to take away your pride. I had to learn how to live without pride. When you get into a certain income bracket, all of a sudden there's certain expectations on your life. So when the wind becomes wind and, a, and it, the attack of your finances become prevalent, all of a sudden now your pride is attacked. Uh, all of a sudden now you're not living in the fine and fancy home that I used to live in. You're not driving the fancy cars, plural, that I used to drive. But all of a sudden now you begin to say, God, I don't care. I just surrender. I surrender my all to thee. Everything I give it unto thee. God, I don't care how I look. If I got to get on my face in the middle of Town Road, I'm going to say, God, have your way. Amen. Hallelujah. When your win becomes win. Hezekiah besought God. He, he, the, the word beseech means to beg or urgently, urgently or anxiously request. He began to urgently request from God. God, I don't want to die, but I want to live. Hallelujah. You know the story, the rest of the story goes, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto God and God gave him 15 more years because his faith took him from the deathbed to 15 more years. I know that don't sound like a lot, but when you are about to die, 15 years is a lifetime. Somebody... Now, who would have had a, a sickness that could have caused death in your life? Huh? Huh? 15 years to a person that has a death sentence on his life is a long time. Yes, Remember, when your win becomes win, your faith will make you whole. Amen. Oh, bless his holy name, which brings us back into second into Jonah, the second chapter, as we close. Hallelujah. Jonah, the second chapter. We're going to start at verse number seven. It says, when my soul 
fainted. Let me tell y'all something. When you get good and tired of something, you're going to do something about it. How many of y'all know you can get good and tired of being sick? Come on now. I got tired of feeling like my stomach and my blood pressure was up. So I turned to being a vegetarian. Huh? When you get good and tired of something, you're going to do something about it. When you're tired of being overweight, you're going to turn down the Twinkies. You're going to get rid of the Reese cups. You're going you're gonna to turn your back on the sodas. Huh? Come on now. Huh? You're going to pull back on all those peanuts and all that other stuff that you eat. Hallelujah. When you get tired of having diabetes, you're going to get rid of that weight problem. Huh? You're going to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets you. Huh? When you get tired, you're going to do something about it. Hallelujah. When you get tired of living a mediocre life, you're going to say, listen, I can't do it with the boyfriend and the girlfriend and the friends that talk mess, but I'm going to seek God. Hallelujah. When you get good and tired of something, Jonah got tired. He said, when my soul fainted within me, I got tired. I'm tired, God. I'm tired of not doing it your way. When you get good and tired of being beat up and abused, all of a sudden you're going to be present your body Amen. as a living sacrifice. Amen. I know that's right, daughter. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. The wind comes a lot of times because we are disobedient to God. But when you get good and tired, glory to his name. God, how did this end up like this? Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Because you took your focus off of God and you put your focus on the outer situations and circumstances. Oh, bless his name. Jonah could have drowned, but God had purpose in his life. He had an original intent in his life. He had a word that had to be spoken regardless of his disobedience in his life. Many of y'all are still here. I'm still here because God has purpose in my life. Yes. Somebody ought to say yes in here. Yes. Come on, say yes in here. Y'all yes. know you've done some things that you shouldn't have done while being in the church. You know you've done some things and said some things you shouldn't have said. Yes. But God gave us mercy. His mercy endure forever. Can we say thank you, God? Can we say thank you, God? The second thing that stood out in my mind, hallelujah. Y'all give me about six more minutes and I'm done. The second thing that stood out in my mind was a journey that would have normally taken 40 days end up becoming expedited into three days and three nights. Hallelujah. Why? Because in the midst of the wind, Jonah began to come to his senses. Remember, I told you that's one of the principles. You come to your senses. He began to come to his senses. And in the midst of coming to his senses, he began to say, listen, they that are third. Lying vanities forsake their own mercies. It's not about the title. Hallelujah. And I had to realize this. It's not about the title. It's about your life. It's about the life you live. The, the apostle Paul said, I counted myself as a castaway. Hallelujah. I counted myself. I had to, I had to, I had to literally put, push myself back from others that I don't become a castaway. Hallelujah. God is going to deliver you out of your win. Some of y'all are in some very unhappy situations and circumstances. And God is going to deliver you. Turn with me quickly to the book of Luke real quick as we close. Hallelujah. As we close. All of a sudden now we find that there's Simon Peter. He's talking to the Lord. He's walking with the Savior. He's seeing these miracles. He's seeing all these things come about. Now y'all think about this. You're doing everything that God has told you to do. Huh? You're doing everything. You, you're keeping his commandments. You do, you're doing what God, you, you, you're being, you're loving. 
And when I say commandments, I'm talking about love because anybody can go to church on a day. But it takes a real and a strong believer to love. Because love covers the multitudes of fault. Hallelujah. There's some people, there's some people that no matter how God changes you, no matter how God reverses the charge in your life, they still going to hold you accountable on what they think the was was. Huh? Don't allow your was to become your now. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you, it don't matter how much you change your life. They're still going to hold you accountable on what they think they know about you. How many y'all know? But how many y'all know that God is a change of heart? How many y'all know that God is a savior? How many y'all know that God is a deliverer? How many y'all know that God can change the hearts of man? Hallelujah. To the ways of God. Hallelujah. We just have to understand the when. Hallelujah. Peter, walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus. I mean, he was doing all the things that he should have done according to the standards of that time. This is why it was hard for him to accept the Gentile. Because he said, Lord, I've never even touched anything unclean. Huh? If the devil gets your faith, he has you. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. Satan desires to have you and sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee that your faith fail not. And when? And when? And when? And when? Thou art converted. Strengthen your brethren. Not if you could convert it. Huh? Not maybe I'm converted. But when, when your win becomes win, when you become converted through your faith, yeah. strengthen your brethren. Yeah. Let them know, listen, baby, you can make it. Yeah. You can get through this. Yeah. You can get out of this. Yeah. You will overcome this. Yeah. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah. God is going to bring you out. How do I know? Because he brought me out. Yeah. Can we say hallelujah? How do I know? Because he made a way for me. Yeah. How do I know? Because he did it. For my brother and my sister, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. We got to understand that this is a great trial and tribulation because Jesus later on told Peter, he said, listen, you're going to deny me. Peter said, not so, Lord. I ain't going to deny you. He said, listen, Peter, when your wind come on your life, you're going to be denied. Hallelujah. When your wind comes on your life, you're going to deny Christ. And, and Peter said, no, 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 Lord. I'm not going to deny you, Lord. I'm not going to deny you. He said, listen, when the crow crocked thrice, three times, you're going to know. And we all know the story that Peter, Peter denied Christ because the crow crocked three times. The wind came on his life. And in the midst of the wind coming on his life, at that moment, he failed. Hallelujah. And I always ask the question, as I close real quickly, I always ask the question that, listen, what's the difference between Peter and and Judas huh come on now what's the difference between Peter and Judas well I'll tell you as I close Peter came to his win well no let me start with Judas Judas came to his win and he allowed his flesh and his self pity to cause him to take his own life but Peter on the other hand he went out Tried to fish, according to St. John 21, and he caught nothing. Why? Because there wasn't a purpose on his life that you will no longer catch fish, but you will become the fisherman of men. In other words, listen, don't keep trying to do what you're familiar with. Huh? Allow your faith to kick in. Huh? Peter did what he was familiar with, and it did not work. The Bible said he caught nothing. But when he came to his win. No, but he came to his senses. Good God Almighty. He said, God, I give up. I surrender. And I'm going to do as you told me to do. I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to wait. I'm a tarry. I'm a sit there. I'm a wait. See, let me tell y'all something. The problem with some of us is that we have a weight problem. And I'm not talking about your pounds, but the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like an eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Peter held on. He knew 
said, listen, I got 50 days from this point to hold on. And the Bible says that at the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come in, hallelujah, then they spoke. There came in a mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. And the spirit, the rock of God, filled the holy temple. Yeah, hey, hey. the Ruach of God, the Holy Spirit of God filled the temple. And all of a sudden, they begin to speak in other tongues. They begin to minister in languages beyond their own nationality language. They begin to speak the word of God. This is that that the prophet Joel have spoken of. Can we say yes? This is that that the prophet Joel has spoken of, that God will pour the spirit upon all flesh, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see dreams. Can we say hallelujah? Hallelujah. When you win becomes when your faith will make you all leave you with one last point. Your W-H-E-N, when faith is mixed with it, turns into a W-I-N. For at the end of the book, we win. Come on, give God some praise and pray my strength in the Lord. to please stand what a powerful word today when your win becomes your win is when your faith will make you whole how many of you know God used that man today Here's the real test. James tells us this because the, he, he knows it's one of the bishops in the church, if you know church history. But he says this, and he says this for an important reason. He says, let's not just be hearers of the word, but let's be doers of the word. Because there are many people that have come to church, and because we're still in that balance between the win and the win, that we hear the word of God, but we don't apply it. The Bible lets us know that without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Amen? How many know that word was for you today? I'm not coming. I don't want to get in your business. We just want to take a few moments to minister to you. Praise the Lord. Because uh, I believe in my heart that somebody heard not just the word, but it's a life-changing word on today. To those of you who stream with us in the services on today, I trust that you've enjoyed yourself. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm confident. I know you enjoyed yourself today because you can't get that level of word everywhere. So we're grateful that you're tuned in on today. And I'll tell you this, there are two things I want to share with you. Number one, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to get to know him as your personal savior. The book of Romans chapter 10 tells us essentially that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, that's the initial step. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. You believe that Jesus Christ died for you. First of all, you need to believe that you're a sinner Then died for you. The choir just got finished ministering about, it was a three-day process. How many of us, not only did he die, but he was again on the earth. Because he was, my God a life worth living on today. So listen, after your life to the Lord, accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, the next thing I need for you to do is find yourself a good church home. If you're anywhere near 5116 Rice's Town Road, I know a good senior pastor that will take care of you. But if you can't get here, church, and watch the some preaching and good teaching apply it to your life and watch after a period of time you begin to uh, experience what Jesus talked about which is that promised abundant life and that was most important we have been having it's been a treat a treasure so be a joy beyond it if the Lord is leading you to do so go to www.hb.org pray about it. make a donation I say that because it's because of people like you
you that continue sowing to the lives of people like that enable us to remain on the air. In our best English, as we close out on today, help us out, congregation. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. God bless.